The secant function sec theta is 1 divided by the cosine function. The graph of sec theta has asymptotes when cosine theta is 0. We cannot divide by 0. And as the cosine function approaches 0, the secant function approaches infinity or negative infinity. But you might want to know where is the secant on the unit circle? In this video, we'll show two places where we can put the secant on the unit circle and why these are equivalent to 1 over cos theta. Uh, first, though, I need to point out a common point of confusion, and that is confusing sec theta, the reciprocal with cos theta, and with the inverse cosine function, sometimes also called the arc cos function. The inverse cosine function is written with this little negative 1 notation, and of course that's the reason it's confusing, uh, because this same notation is often used for a reciprocal. For example, if you have a variable, a real number a, and if you see a superscript negative 1, that's usually taken to mean 1 divided by a. But if we have a function, for example, uh, f of x, then in that case we generally understand the f superscript negative 1 to mean the inverse. And that's the case here with the cosine, as it is a function, so if we put a negative 1 superscript there, then what we mean is the inverse cosine function. Uh, if we want the reciprocal, 1 over cos, where we either write 1 over cos, uh, or we use the term secant or sec theta. All right, now back to the unit circle. I'm going to start with the sine animation, and I really love this one because it just shows exactly uh, what the sine function is. It's quite a simple concept, really. You let the angle move around uh, the unit circle at a constant rate and measure the height of the point on the unit circle. The cosine tracks the horizontal distance, uh, or the x value of the point on the unit circle, and the animation is still nice, maybe not quite as nice because the graph is going up and down, but the point on the unit circle appears to go left and right. We could rotate the unit circle 90 degrees uh, and it looks nicer. That's sort of cheating though, isn't it? <laughs> All right, we'll get to the secant in a minute, but first let me show the tangent function. So we can measure the tangent at the right hand side of the circle. And again, if we do that, it lines up really nicely with the graph and we can see the tan graph shooting off to infinity as the angle approaches the vertical at pi and 2, 3 pi and 2, etc. But we can also put the tangent here as a tangent to the circle. And then the tangent function measures the distance from that point to the x-axis. Now doing it that way doesn't again line up quite as nicely with the graph, um, but it's going to help in a minute because I want to show also two different ways of representing the secant function. All right, so the first place we can place a secant on the unit circle is here, um, from the origin to the point where that angle line meets the first vertical tangent. And to see why this distance is equal to a 1 over cos theta, well, look at these two triangles, which are actually similar. Using ratios in similar triangles, uh, we can set up a ratio of hypotenuse divided by adjacent. We'll get our sec theta over 1 equals 1 over cos theta. And also, if we show the tan of theta there again, in that same triangle, we can see where the formula tan squared plus 1 is equal to sec squared comes from using the Pythagorean theorem. The word secant, by the way, means uh, in geometry, a line that intersects a curve at a minimum of two distinct points, apparently coming from the word, the Latin word secare, meaning to cut. And you might say, well, this line segment only seems to cross the unit circle at one point. Okay, but if we were to extend the line, uh, then it would cross at two points compared to the tangent, uh, whereas no matter how far you extend that, it's only going to touch at one point. Now, the second place on the unit circle we can measure the secant uh, is here. So we create that tangent we had from before and measure the horizontal distance now from the origin to the point where that tangent crosses the x-axis. And this triangle, of course, is actually congruent to the one we just had. Uh, which is why we can measure the tangent and secant using either triangle. Now, measuring secant in this way along the horizontal axis um, is similar to the cosine. It lines up really nicely with the graph if we cheat a little bit and uh, rotate the unit circle by 90 degrees. Uh, with the cosecant function, which is the reciprocal of sine, we can measure it vertically here, and again, it lines up really nicely with the graph, uh, just like the graph of sine. We can see the this cosecant function shooting off to infinity uh, as sine approaches zero. And we can also add the cotangent to that diagram here, 
And I think that's a really nice visual of the tangent and the cotangent functions. So that's the tangent and the cotangent being the tangent of the complementary angle. Also, we can see from that diagram uh, where we get the identity cot squared plus one is equal to cosec squared. Again, using this right angled triangle and the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, I hope you enjoyed those little visualizations and it helped you to understand the reciprocal circular functions. Thank you.